ambulance or something to come get her or whatever they're doing. And she's twittering about how excited she is that she's having this miscarriage in the board meeting because there's a three-week, which is a lie, there is no three-week hoop jump, as she calls it, to have an abortion in Wisconsin. Um, but I'm telling you, these people are mentally ill. Mentally ill, and I know that you have one that this really <laughs> that tweet speaks for itself. That tweet, yeah, there's mentally, nothing else. I don't know if mentally possessed. Maybe I wrote possessed on some of my notes on, on this. This is, um, I think you know, Lisa Harris in Michigan, mm -hmm. and she's also a part-time professor she's at the University University of Michigan. She's an abortionist, and she was pregnant while she was doing abortions, and she wrote an article. I'm surprised she wrote it. I'm surprised it got published and everything. But um, so she said, I'm quoting, um, there was a leg and foot in my forceps and a thump, thump in my abdomen. Instantly, tears were streaming from my eyes. She's doing an 18-week abortion. While she's 18 while weeks she's pregnant. While she's 18 That's weeks exactly pregnant. Right. Mm -hmm. And, okay, I go, when I first started reading, I thought, oh, it's a Carol Everett story. She's repenting and and so see the, the light. seeing the light and see the wrong of what she's doing. Uh, no, it gets better. Um, it, she wrote uh, an article, the second trimester abortion provision, breaking the silence and changing the discourse. Um, she said that she wants to explain the ethical position, says it helps her and other abortionists continue practicing despite the moral and psychological you know, I can't, the moral I'm, and psychological problems that she's having with this abortion, she has to overcome mm -hmm. to continue to well, do these abortions. There's, there's two things. She says later, the, the, the pro-lifers call us butchers. Mm -hmm. She says, we are butchers. Mm -hmm. yes. She admits all of it. And she, she says, um, abortion is different from other surgical procedures. I put, you think? You yeah, know? Right. Um, then, see, she says that there is a need to cross borders and boundaries uh, in order to reflect seriously of the question of how providers determine their limit for abortion, you know, like nothing's wrong with the first trimester, I guess, and warn that the issues surrounding the question may be frankly too dangerous for pro-choice movements to acknowledge. Why? That's right. Because it, they've got to accept every abortion. She's, she's admitting that they've got to keep all of this stuff hidden. Mm -hmm. right. They've got to keep it out of the public view. Right. They've got to keep it out of the view of their own colleagues yeah. right. because they might not get into it. Let's back to this point. She is now dismembering this 18... Right. Week old With a baby. Leg and foot, she pulls the she, leg. She, she pulls the leg, and all of a sudden, there's a there's a, a pull mm -hmm. on the forceps, and at and the same time, can... yeah, she says there's like an electromagnetic pulse that goes through her arm to her abdomen, mm -hmm. and then the her own baby at 18 weeks kicks herself. So she finishes the abortion mm -hmm. as she's bawling. And she takes extra interest in looking at the baby parts in the pan because it would resemble the time of her the baby she's carrying gestation. And These people, I'm telling you, they're sick. These the, um, people are sick. Uh, consequently, she was more interested than usual in seeing the fetal parts when she was done because they would so closely re resemble those of her own fetus. Isn't I put sweet? Frankenstein by that. That yeah. reminded me of Frankenstein. Um, but here's one. I had to, you know, I, I had to read it like five times because the first time my blood pressure went up and my right. heart's right. palpitating, you know, and I'm pacing and wanting to cry so, out. So but, you either... In angst or in love, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> it was not love. Um, she says, uh, when she describes how the second, abortion, second trimester abortion is done, but see, I want to say that the first trimester is every bit as grisly, it's every bit as horrible, it's every bit dismembering. Sure, sure. You know, it's just, is it just because they're smaller that that makes it okay? The more they look like us, the more they, we get upset about mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. That's the reality. Well, uh, she says, what kind of disassociative process inside us allows us to do this routinely? What normal person does this kind of work? I said, a possessed one. You got to be possessed, right? What normal person does no this kind of work? Person does. This is an abortionist speaking about her own trade. Right. Do you think an auto mechanic says that? No. <laughs> and then... Um, but it doesn't change your mind. Uh -uh, nothing changes That's your mind. why I say these people are... Psycho. Psycho. Yeah. They're, they're psychos. They're nuts. Oh, but wait. Wait. It gets... It's much better. Um... So she's all, she says um, she went through a task of reassembling fetal parts, metal tray, odd ritual that abortion providers perform required uh, to make sure nothing's left because, you know, infection gets in, they die, whatever. She doesn't say that. But it also permits us in an odd way to pay respect to the fetus. I went, what? It, it's, it, there are what? no words. She's only saying what these people experience every day. And, and that's the thing pro-lifers need to understand. Yeah. When we, what we hear in this office and what you deal with in your office, mm -hmm. 
This is the this is the garbage we hear all the time. Right. This is what these people's lives are like. And she talks about how uh, other abortionists have drunk problems and right. relationship problems right. and, you know, well, my gosh. Which is the Achilles heel of the abortion industry, which is why it's so easy oftentimes to put these guys out of business. Look at McBrayer. We heard right. about it on the news. He's driving down the road. A woman cuts him off. Eight blocks later, he jumps out of his car, punches this woman in the face with her two children in the back seat. Yeah. The guy's nuts. Right. They are, they are crazy. I'm telling you, they're nuts. That, and, but but let me oh, oh yeah go ahead and finish up I, I gotta <laughs> <laughs> you you need to calm as your blood pressure yeah, going right. up um, let's see she uh, she says um, the narrator says Harris tackles the ethical and moral positions that allow for gray areas do you have any gray areas on this I don't have any gray areas the abortion pr provision by advocating the gradualist perspective. The respect owed to a fetus increases as pregnancy advances and the fetus becomes more like a born person because it looks, you know, we can't deny it's, you know, not a basket or a right. snake or something. <clears throat> um, but she says we have to acknowledge, well, we have to simultaneously acknowledge the value of early human life and be woman-centered. Well, I put on there self-centered, not, not hardly, but it's self -cent very self-centered because she says... Um, Compel, let's see, more serious than early abortions are the uh, second trimester abortions, and the concern is that women have all sorts of compelling and legitimate reasons for choosing abortion. And I said, let me give you three, self, self, self. And there's no legitimate reason. We all know that. Um, anyway, she talks about the care that is given uh, uh, above that she's described. In, I, and then she says she uh, contests the point, arguing that rather weakening the argument of abortion Facing abortion with honesty. I wrote, yeah, honesty? Show the mom the metal pan. Mm -hmm. There's honesty for you. Oh, show it to her on the sonogram before you do it. Yeah, exactly. And or give her no, this article and let her read it before you do her abortion. There you yeah, go. That's that, even better. Well, but that yeah. would cut the money. She wouldn't, get, wouldn't right. get paid. But she said it's every bit as violent to deny a woman an abortion. And again, I'm this going, This is rationalization. What? that they, they have to rationalize what they're doing. And it's like when you hear... Uh, men who rape little children. I read an article when we were doing the research for the child predator thing, and they had interviewed this guy in penitentiary, and he had he had raped children as young as 16 months old. He had raped little girls as young as 16 months. And the oldest one he had raped, they said he had raped probably 300 children mm. before he actually got caught. And some of them were five and six, but some of them were as young as 16 months. He, when they interviewed him, rationalized it. He said, look, they enjoyed it. Uh, they don't know how to express that they want to have sexual relationships. And he said, these children enjoyed it. These little girls that I was having sex with enjoyed it. And he just went on and on and rationalized it. His thought process, which was sick, was exactly like this woman, Lisa Harris. These people are sick, I'm telling you. And, but let me tell you something else that's come out of this that, that we really need to pay attention to. This woman now is being held as a hero by some in the, on the pro-abortion side. She's so honest. Because she come forward and she's, even despite all of this, she continues to support women's rights. Right. And so continues, she not only does abortions, she trains other people to do abortions. And so she's kind of become a hero to them. Mm -hmm. And one of the things you keep hearing, and one of the things she kind of alluded to is that, yeah, we have to do the tough work of the pro-choice movement. It's easy to go out here and just talk about it, but we do the actual heavy lifting. Mm -hmm. You know what I... If you go back and read some of the stuff that uh, Heydrich said, mm -hmm. Himmler, mm -hmm. Hitler, there's no quotes from him about it, but there are from Himmler and Heydrich and others that were involved in the, in the Nazi Holocaust, mm -hmm. where they said, look, a hundred years from now, people are going to look back on the, on the Nazi Holocaust, what we're doing with the Jews. They're going to look back and see us as heroes, as the people that had to do the hard work. And, you know, Himmler, when he went out and saw some executions and he got sick to his stomach and threw up and all this stuff, and he made that statement that, you know, our people are doing the, the hard work that everybody knows has to be done. And, yes, it's distasteful and it's, and it's, and it's not something we enjoy doing, but we're having to do the, the heavy lifting, the hard work. And the language that they used is exactly what this woman is saying and what all her defenders are saying. Mm -hmm. um, these mm -hmm. people are mentally ill. Um, anyway, we can. I don't even know if mentally ill covers it. It's I, just I it's beyond evil. that. It's they're, beyond. They're evil. They're, they're pathologically evil. 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 They're thoroughly evil. evil. Real quick, Troy, you, we got just a couple of minutes. Um, well, doggone, we spoke about some sellouts earlier, and I think one person that absolutely tops our list is Frankie Schaefer. Right. Uh, he's mm -hmm. published a new website called 
stopdomesticterror.com. And I ran across this because what he's doing is he's posting evidence, what he believes is evidence, uh, and, and, and request evidence of, of criminal activity, uh, domestic terrorism. And he's submitting a letter, which I have here in my hand, to Eric Holder, which is our uh, illustrious attorney general uh, under uh, the Obama administration. And he's saying, this is Frankie Schaefer. This is the son of Francis Schaefer, who wrote the Christian Manifesto and the God Who's Near, et cetera, had been a hero of all of ours. The hero of the pro-life movement. Absolutely. One of the earliest heroes. I've, I've, I've watched his sermons right. at Dr. Kennedy's. I mean, he, he's phenomenal. He's, he's really shaped my life. So his son, Frankie Schaefer, uh, of course, now he wants to go by Frank Schaefer or Franklin Schaefer, said he has a, quote, insider perspective on the religious right. He has a unique perspective. And he's asking for a meeting with Eric Holder so that he can cooperate with law enforcement officials to, in a sense, rat out everybody that he knows in, quote, the, rid- the religious right, because he believes that our language, as you just talked about, equating Hitler-esque right. activities uh, with abortionists, is, is going to cause domestic terrorism. And he believes you, me, and all of us in the pro-life movement need to be put behind bars. Here's his letter. And he wants, and he's wanting to meet with the Attorney General of the United States to put all of us in jail. His father must be spinning like a lathe in his and, grave. And remember, this guy was an eloquent pro-life speaker, and yeah. and he wrote the forward to uh, Joe Scheidler's book, Closed. He's right. as evil to me as Lisa Harris is. And he's soliciting donations on his website, uh, his uh, Velvet Revolution, his Stop Domestic 